Hi, I'm Bridget and I'm an educator here at the St. Louis Zoo. Today I'm here to talk with you about something really awesome, which is extreme adaptations. And you may be thinking, hey, what's an adaptation? An adaptation is anything an animal has or does to help them survive in their habitat. And today we're talking about a very specific type of adaptation, which is dynamic defenses. Now when you hear the word defense, you may be thinking, huh, that reminds me of a sport. And that's because lots of sports have a defensive side and their job is to make sure the other team doesn't score any points. But for an animal, a defense is a little different. It's anything they do to help protect themselves from a predator. So there are lots of different types of defenses and animals have amazing adaptations to help them survive. So let's get down to it. Let's talk about some deep, deep, deep defenses. Now, picture you're an animal. What kind of defenses do you know of or do you think that you would want if you were one? Hmm. Maybe some sharp claws or very pointy teeth or maybe a weapon like some poison or venom or these horns on the guy right next to me. Those are all really good examples of defenses, but I'm going to talk about one that's even more complicated than those, which is mimicry. Now, mimicry is kind of cool because it's when an animal does something like a different animal to protect themselves. So right now you're seeing some pictures of two butterflies. Now pretend you're a hungry frog looking for food to eat and you see these two butterflies. Which one would you eat? Would you eat one? I'm not real sure. Well, let's break it down. The one on the right side is a monarch butterfly. Monarchs are poisonous. So if you chose the one on the right, you could have gotten really sick because they're poisonous. The one on the left is a viceroy and they're perfectly safe to eat. So if you chose that one, you'd be fine and have a really good meal. That is one crazy cool and complicated behavior though. Now let's get to it. Let's go see some animals who have three different types of defensive adaptations, starting with one right here in Red Rocks. So come with me and let's go explore some defenses. Here we are at our first dynamic defensive animal, the Grevy zebra. Grevy zebra are the largest of the three zebra species. They also have the most intricate and thin uh, stripes of any of the zebras as well. And maybe my favorite thing about them is the big fuzzy ears they have which actually help a lot while they're in their habitat because where they live can get really hot and large ears help dissipate heat from an animal's body. So it's like built-in ear conditioning. Let's talk about the zebra's maybe most famous adaptation, which are their stripes. A zebra's stripes work better than you would think for camouflage, but to understand that you have to think about their predators. Most animals who would want to hunt a zebra only see in black and white and maybe some shades of gray. So a black and white zebra standing in tall yellow grass would stand out really easily for us, but for a lion who only sees in shades of gray, they would actually blend in really well. It even gets better than that. Zebras tend to hang out in herds around watering holes, mostly made up of females and their young offspring. If a predator was around and all the zebras took off at the same time, that would be lots of black and white stripes running in a black and white habitat at 40 miles an hour. So it's really hard for an animal to just pick out one to hunt when they're all running together. Another cool defense that they have is to kick. They have really strong back legs and a hard hook that looks a lot like what a horse hoof looks like. So if a predator got too close, they can buck or kick out their back foot and try to hit the predator. And if they made contact, they could injure that predator and escape while they're hurt. Our zebra herd is made up of females and their offspring. Our newest bull, Gloria, will be a year old in June. She's probably the easiest one to spot. Well, or maybe stripes in this case, because while she's not only the smallest, she also has the craziest mane you'll ever see. Here we are at our second extreme animal defense animal. This is actually a poison dart frog. They're pretty small, so I'm gonna pop up a picture so you can see them up close. Look at how beautiful they are in color. And actually, 
Poison dart frogs come in just about every color of the rainbow. So you might see some that are red and blue and green. Yeah, this one's kind of a yellow golden color. Now those bright colors may not seem like a really helpful adaptation, but in fact they are. Those color it, that coloration tells predators, hey, I'm poisonous, don't eat me, or I'll make you super, super sick, and you'll regret it. And that teaches predators, hey, I'm dangerous. And so they just leave them alone. Now, there are lots of types of poison dart frogs. This one's called a kiki poison dart frog, and we have them here at the St. Louis Zoo. You might be wondering, how do they become poisonous? And it's actually kind of a cool chain, because it's a food chain. So there are a lot of toxic plants out there, and invertebrates eat those plants, and they have that poison inside of them, and then these little frogs eat hundreds of those cool poisonous insects, and then they become toxic as well. They're some of the most toxic animals on Earth. So that is an extreme defense. Let's go visit another animal who's just around the bend who also has a cool defense as well. Here we are once again in the herbitarium visiting our third and final animal who's got extreme defenses. So behind me, you'll see some really cool turtles. So I want you to think for a minute. If you were a prey species and a predator was attacking you, what kind of defenses would you want? Maybe some kind of weapon to fight back, like a poisonous frog? Or maybe you would want something to hide and defend yourself in, like a suit of armor. Kind of like what is built into our turtles back here. These are McCord box turtles, and they have a shell, like a lot of turtles and tortoises do. And the shell is made up of bone, a hard layer of scales on the outside called scoots. This makes up kind of a suit of armor, and then turtles and tortoises carry it around with them everywhere they go. However, box turtles are even more special. So these McCord box turtles come from China, and they live in a mountainous area close to cute little streams like what you see here. We also have box turtles in Missouri, two type ornate box turtles and three-toed box turtles. There's a super special secret trait about box turtles that you may not have known, which has to do with their shell. So they have a cool top shell, like you can see on our friends right here, but they also have an undershell. It's called a plastron. And right in the middle of their plastron, they have a hinge. And what that hinge allows them to do is close up the front and the back of their shell. And what they can do is tuck in their arms, their legs, their tail, their head, and then close that shell up and it protects them on all sides. This is a special thing that only box turtles can do and is one crazy cool defense because then most predators can't even get to them. They're safe in their shell. Now that is one dynamic defense. We've learned about three different animals and their cool defenses today. And hopefully you learned a lot and enjoyed watching it. Have a good day. Bye.